Thank you for the introduction and uh, thank you for the invitation this, uh, and for the organizer uh, to uh, this uh, nice conference. Uh, so I'm Xiaoyan from the University of uh, Oxford. In, uh, in fact, they invite uh, Simon Benjamin, my supervisor, but uh, he's uh, super busy right now, so I just come instead. Uh, to be honest, I just uh, started three months ago, so I don't have uh, many new and in interesting stuff uh, to share with you. But uh, today I will also talk about some uh, recent results by my colleagues and also some uh, recent findings by myself. So hope you will be uh, interesting. Uh, as you can see, I will uh, talk about error mitigation uh, for shallow circuit, in fact, and also its application in quantum chemistry simulation. So here is an online. Uh, first, I will talk about the motivation and then uh, discuss the error mitigation. And then I also quickly review uh, chemistry simulation. And finally, I will uh, combine error mitigation and uh, chemistry simulation. Okay, uh, here is a roadmap for four torrent quantum computing. So here, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so here you can see the threshold for the uh, for the uh, two cube gate is uh, ninety nine percent, and uh, you can see now for the systems, probably you cannot see this. I cannot see. I, so you can see that uh, for all the three systems, now we can already uh, achieve this uh, threshold. And especially for the iron trap uh, system by laser control, we can already get 99.9% uh, 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 fidelity. And also for the other two systems, superconducting and the other iron trap uh, system, we also uh, have a quite nice fidelity. Uh, this graph is from the NKIT uh, website, where I think you can also find uh, some more interesting stuff. Uh, speak, speaking of uh, NKIT, so uh, Simon asked me to add these slides uh, to you to uh, int introduce the NKIT program. So I, I just uh, read through uh, these slides. So NKIT is the Networked Quantum Information Technologies, and it is the largest of the four UK national quantum tech hub, and uh, it is started at the end of the 2014 and uh, we have a lot of uh, money, and uh, we have Oxford, and uh, <laughs> many uh, nice universities, and also companies. And I think the, uh, the goal uh, of NKIT is uh, to create a modular uh, quantum computer. Uh, uh, that, that means, so uh, we can uh, make some very small sized, uh, but a, uh, small sized quantum computer, which uh, we have a very high fidelity, and we can make many uh, that kind of uh, modular uh, uh, quantum uh, hardwares, and then we connect, connect different quantum hardwares using uh, quantum optics. So here you can see a uh, schematic way to do this. And also, uh, we have uh, uh, many experiment groups uh, in NKIT. Here I just uh, uh, mentioned uh, some recent uh, progress of the Oxford team, and you can also find the other progress from the NKIT website. So for now, we have uh, uh, get very high fidelity uh, for uh, quantum gates, uh, especially for the two-cube gates, we have 99.9, uh, .9, and for one-cube gate, we can just get probably just a, a perfect uh, gate. And also, we can uh, apply gate between two different species of atoms in one trap, and we can uh, use uh, we can use very cheap uh, uh, microwaves. And uh, uh, quite recently, uh, they also achieve very fast uh, operations. So uh, now the operation time is uh, eight orders faster than the decoherence time. Uh, so please don't ask questions about these uh, slides. I don't know. So if you <laughs> If you want to know more, please visit NKIT or ask uh, Simon. Okay, so from the experiment side, it seems very promising. So we have a very accurate uh, quantum hardware. But in practice, uh, to uh, realize a four torrent quantum computer, still we, there is a huge overhead to implement physical, uh, to implement logical qubit with a physical qubit. So here, let's take a very quick example uh, at the uh, Shor's uh, algorithm. Uh, for example, if we want to factorize uh, 1,000 uh, bits, then we need 6 million, uh, at least we need 6 million uh, physical qubits to realize this. This graph is from uh, this uh, paper uh, 
where uh, Er, I think he's also in the audience. If you are interested, you can also ask questions about this, uh, uh, this graph. And so six million uh, qubits, I think it's promising probably in five, 10, or uh, 20 years. But uh, before that time, can we do something without error, uh, without full tolerance? So one solution is called the hybrid algorithm. So the hybrid algorithm is a combination of the uh, classical and quantum uh, computation. So the algorithm is divided into two parts, where uh, one is uh, uh, solved by, the easy one is solved by the classical com computer, and the uh, hard one is solved by the quantum computer. So here, let's take an example. Uh, here we have a quite a small size the quantum hardware, and it is also of quite shallow circuit, where uh, each gate is uh, controlled by a few parameters. So for each round of the algorithm, we perform, uh, we use some uh, uh, parameter setting, and then we run it, we perform some measurement. And then based on the measurement outcome, we can update the parameter according to like the gradient descent or any uh, algorithms. And then we, with the updated uh, uh, parameter, we can run the hardware again and again to achieve some uh, goal. So here, this is a combination, it's a quick example of the hybrid algorithm. So I get these two graphs from this uh, paper, where you can also uh, find uh, some uh, quick, uh, brief summary of uh, the hybrid algorithm. Of course, uh, recently, there are many works about hybrid, hybrid algorithm. So, uh, uh, so, so it seems that, uh, so here, for the hybrid algorithm, of course, we can uh, use a, for, uh, a quantum error correction to correct errors, but remember that we have a huge uh, overhead to implement the logical qubit. So instead, how about we don't uh, implement uh, uh, quantum error correction? Then can we still get some uh, accurate results? Then this talk is about uh, how to mitigate errors for this kind of a shallow circuit. So uh, one method uh, I, I will introduce is uh, called uh, error mitigation. Uh, uh, what I will talk is uh, mainly uh, about uh, uh, digital quantum simulation, while the previous talk is about uh, analog quantum uh, simulation. So for example, let's consider a, a process, quite general process, where we have a state uh, row in, and we uh, apply uh, uh, several unitary gates sequentially, and then we perform some measurement. Know that the information is encoded in the measurement outcome, that is the measurement probability, instead of the uh, measurement outcome we get. So we have many uh, uh, examples for such cases, like the uh, phase estimation, swap test, also hybrid algorithm. Uh, while we also have some other algorithms, such as the Shor's algorithm, Grover's algorithm, where the result is encoded in the measurement outcome instead of the measurement uh, probability. So here we just focus on this type of uh, 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 computation. Then uh, for the output state, uh, if we have no noise, we can get a noiseless state. And, but actually, in practice, what we get is a noisy state. Then the error mitigation problem is to infer the noiseless measurement outcome from the noisy measurement outcome. In fact, there are a few uh, error mitigation methods. The first one is called error uh, extrapolation. This method uh, works quite interestingly by deliberately uh, making the noise worse. So let's see how it works. So first, let's consider linear extrapolation. Uh, consider for simplicity that uh, the uh, noise channel is a stochastic channel. That is, the error only happens with a, a small probability, epsilon i. And then uh, we can expand the noisy value uh, by uh, ignoring higher uh, orders of the uh, noise rate. And uh, suppose in experiments, we can make the noise uh, worse, that is we can increase the noise, then we, get, we can get another uh, noisy uh, measurement outcome. Note that here the measurement, noisy out measurement outcome is a linear relationship to the noise rate. So it is quite natural to uh, get to have a, a estimation of the noiseless value by using linear uh, extrapolation. So here, uh, linear extrapolation works uh, by, uh, by assuming that the total noise rate is not high, in, uh, uh, such that we can ignore higher, uh, terms of, uh, 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 higher terms of the noise rate. And in practice, we can also uh, convert an arbitrary noise model by using uh, Turing, the Turing, uh, Turing technique 
to, uh, to the stochastic uh, noise model. So that is we can just uh, add uh, extra poly uh, matrices before and after the uh, gate to uh, get accurate, uh, to convert uh, arbitrary noise model to stochastic noise model. And also, if we cannot proportionally increase the noise rate in experiment, we can also randomly add extra poly matrices to uh, increase the error rate. And furthermore, we can, we can also consider uh, to uh, use more extrapolation points to get even more accurate estimation of the noiseless value. And this method is uh, uh, proposed in both these two uh, papers, where the first one is by my uh, colleague, uh, while the second one is by the team uh, here in IBM. Uh, so uh, for the first one, they also propose another uh, simulation method, while, uh, and, and while the second one they propose to uh, two uh, error uh, mitigation methods. While the, uh, while the other error mitigation method uh, will, uh, is uh, the negative probability, which we will discuss very soon. But before that, I will discuss uh, something more, uh, which is uh, called exponential extrapolation method. So here you can find a new batch. So here, uh, so if you found this new batch, it means that this is a new result, uh, so new recent results. Uh, so remember that the noise value can be uh, expanded in this way. Here, uh, a PI, uh, PK, means the probability that K errors happen. Uh, in the circuit. So here we still uh, assume the uh, stochastic model. And that k is the average measurement outcome uh, when we have uh, k errors. So here n is the number of gates and r is the error rate. Here for simplicity, we assume that the error rate is for every gate is the same. And then when uh, n is large and the uh, uh, total number of error rates is uh, is a constant, we can uh, convert the binomial distribution into uh, the Poisson distribution, that is like this one. So you can see that the probability PK is proportional, uh, is exp exponentially decreasing to the error rate. Then it is uh, naturally to uh, have a guess that the noisy uh, value is also uh, exponentially decreasing to the uh, noise rate. Then instead of linear extrapolation, we can also try exponential extrapolation. So later I will show uh, simulation results of the linear and the extrapolation, uh, uh, exponential extrapolation method, but uh, before that, we should, we, I will also talk about the other method introduced by the IBM team, which is called the negative causal probability method. The method is uh, essentially is to synthesize the unphysical inverse of any noise channel. So here for simplicity, let's just consider uh, one uh, gate and one noise. Suppose that we consider the depolarizing noise channel, and then we can easily find the inverse of the channel by just solve the equation. And then uh, we can also write it in a more uh, elegant way. Here, P1 uh, means the probability that we do not affect the state, while P, uh, P2 means we, uh, with probability P2, we apply some random polymatrices to the uh, to the gate, uh, to the state. But uh, unfortunately, here we have a minus sign. So this minus sign generally prevents this uh, channel to be uh, physical, physically realizable. So we cannot realize it in, uh, in practice. But uh, we should remember that instead of uh, realizing the inverse channel, what in practice we need to do is to get the noiseless value. So. Here we denote the no noiseless value as O and the noise value as uh, O prime. And then the negative probability method works as follows. So with the probability P1, we add nothing. So we, we just add identity uh, channel to uh, identity operation to the, uh, to the state, to, 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 to the process. And then with the probability P2, we randomly add X, Y, Z uh, operations to the uh, to the process. Then in total, we will get four measurement outcomes. And according to the form of the inverse channel, it is natural to get a relationship between the noiseless value and the four noisy value. So in practice, what we need to do is to rerun the circuit many times, while for each time, we randomly add some extra gate, while in total, we can get the noiseless value from the uh, different noise values of the different runs. 
this paper is introduced in the IBM paper, uh, where they also consider some other uh, noise channels. While recently, our colleagues, uh, my colleagues, they also consider uh, to extend the IBM work first. They generalize the result to a general Markovian noise model. So in general, we can uh, use a basis to uh, decompose the uh, channel. And of course, we can, then we can also uh, decompose the inverse channel. And then we can use, the, uh, use the, these bases to cancel any local Markovian noise. And furthermore, we can also cancel any multiple qubit gates by just tensor producting uh, the bases. Another problem is uh, in, uh, in the negative probability method, we need to perform a, a process tomography to apply the uh, probabilities. But in practice, we, we, also, we may also have imperfections in the process tomography. So we may also uh, introduce errors from the process tomography. But uh, fortunately, as we just focus on the average value of the, uh, of the measurement outcome, we can apply the gate set tomography method to eliminate these errors in process uh, tomography. So next, I will uh, show some numerical simulation uh, to compare these uh, th uh, three, in fact, uh, error mitigation methods. Uh, the simulation is a swap test. Uh, simulation using uh, 16 qubits. Here the swap test in general is to evaluate the fidelity between uh, two states. Here the two states are the cast state and the ground state. Uh, so the, the preparation of the, uh, the realization of the swap test is shown here, where the first qubit is the ancillary qubit. It is uh, first uh, realized in the plus state and then we apply control swap operation on the whole system, and then we measure in the X basis to get the outcome. So the fidelity between these two states can be obtained from the measurement of the ancillary qubits. Here we choose a, a very uh, naive decomposition of the swap, uh, swap, uh, control swap operation, uh, while in practice there may be some uh, better, uh, more efficient decomposition. In the simulation, we'll assume that the noise happens before, after uh, every operation. And so we assume that the recovery operation is applied after each gate. And also that we'll assume the noise also occurs in the recovery operation. So here is the simulation result. We consider two different uh, noise models. One is uh, inhomogeneous error, while the other is a leakage error. So in an inhom inhomogeneous error, the probability of uh, having uh, x, y, z uh, errors is uh, uh, 0, 0, 0.1 is, uh, and the other is uh, 0 0.006. And uh, so we, why we choose this probability? Uh, this is because this error rate is what we can achieve currently in experiments. <laughs> While in fact, uh, we assume the error rate for any uh, error, uh, any gates. So, but uh, while remember that the uh, fidelity for single qubit gate is very, very high. So this is even more uh, pessimistic. So from the simulation result here, we have uh, uh, three different uh, uh, values. While the orange one is the result without error mitigation, the blue is the without with, uh, with a linear extrapolation, while the green is the result with the causal probability method. So uh, remember that the fidelity between the cast state and the zero state is uh, 0 0.5. So what we should get is uh, the, uh, uh, the exact value of the measurement outcome should be 0 0.5. So we can see that the result without error mitigation is uh, very far away from the true result. So it deviates a lot from it. While the linear extrapolation works uh, slightly better, so it's uh, indeed uh, uh, makes the result uh, better, improves, uh, improves it uh, a bit, but uh, still the prediction of the linear extrapolation is still not that good. While for the causal probability method, you can see that the mean of the histogram is uh, just uh, 0 0.5. So it, it says that it worked quite well. So here we use, we consider 1,000 samples for each experiment, and we repeat 100 steps uh, to get this uh, histogram. But in practice, you can use more samples. Then the variance of the, uh, of the estimation will be uh, much uh, smaller. Here we also uh, compare the linear extrapolation and exponential extrapolation. We use the same experiment setting, and the result 
is shown as this one. So you can see that although the linear extrapolation doesn't work well, but the, so quite surprisingly, the exponential extrapolation works uh, quite well. So finally, we just uh, combine the results into this uh, one graph. Uh, here, the red bar is the uh, is result by uh, exponential extrapolation, while the green line is the result by causal probability uh, method. So you can see that uh, for the inhomogeneous error case, uh, the uh, causal probability method works uh, slightly better because the variance is uh, slightly smaller. While for the leakage error case, uh, the result is uh, uh, is uh, different, where the Expo uh, exponential extrapolation method works uh, better, while the uh, causal probability method works uh, slightly worse. But uh, you should be careful that the range of the x-axis is different. So in fact, for the leakage error case, the negative probability method doesn't work that worse. So, it, so the range of the x-axis is uh, different. OK, so from the simulation results, we, we can see that uh, error mitigation works quite well, at least for this uh, medium-sized uh, uh, circuit. And then we, uh, uh, we uh, go to the next topic, uh, which is uh, chemistry simulation. First, uh, let's have a quick uh, review uh, about uh, chemistry simulation. Here we just focus on the ground state energy of uh, molecules. Here is the Hamiltonian of the molecule. And in general, to solve uh, the ground state energy of this Hamiltonian, it is hard in classical, using classical machine, while uh, with the quantum mechanics, we can either use uh, consider first quantization method, that is, we just uh, uh, discretize the space, and then we directly implement the space wave function. But for this uh, first quantization method, we even need a lot of qubits for even a very small molecule, so it is not very efficient. While a more, uh, uh, more efficient a method probably for small molecule is the second quantization method. Here we just convert the, we just choose the energy basis for the uh, for each atom, and then we can convert the Hamiltonian in the first quantization to the second quantization. So with the second quantization Hamiltonian, we can use some fermion uh, encoding method like Jordan Wigner or Bravicki naive method to convert this uh, fermion Hamiltonian into a qubit Hamiltonian. So. Here, you can find a recent review about, uh, about chemistry simulation. So then essentially what we need to do in chemistry simulation is to find the lowest energy of a qubit Hamiltonian. There are also two methods. One is uh, called phase estimation. The method works at, by first preparing a state phi that is uh, close to the ground state, and then by using annealing, and then we apply phase estimation to prepare the true ground state. This method is uh, first uh, propo uh, proposed in, uh, in this paper. While another, uh, well, another proposal which is uh, quite uh, popular recently is, co is uh, called the variational quantum Eigenstoffer method. Here we just uh, try uh, an ansatz state by uh, preparing uh, the state uh, by applying some uh, operations that is controlled by uh, some parameters. This is uh, quite similar to the uh, circuit that we discussed uh, at the beginning of the talk, the hybrid algorithm. So the, we apply some unitary gate where each gate is controlled by some uh, parameters. We also have uh, several uh, answers for, uh, for the variational eigenstoffer method. While the target is to minimize uh, the average value uh, of the energy by using, for example, gradient descent method. So uh, the first realization of the variational quantum eigenstoffer method is uh, in this uh, paper. Okay, so next we just uh, uh, jump to uh, see the combination of error correction, uh, uh, error mitigation, and uh, chemistry simulation. So first, let's uh, see the case for the simulation for the hydrogen molecule. Uh, the hydrogen molecule in the minimum basis is uh, is a cu two, two cubic uh, Hamiltonian. In fact. Uh, where here the coefficients uh, are dependent on the distance between the two atoms. And the trial state of, the, of this Hamiltonian is, uh, is this one. So I just uh, copied these uh, results from the uh, recent PRX paper by the Asperu Guzik and the Martinez uh, team. So here, uh, this is also their uh, realization of the, of the uh, trial state. And uh, the right is the result of the, uh, of the uh, ground state energy of the hydrogen. So here they compute both 
the two methods, uh, variational quantum eigensolver and the phase estimation, you can see that variational eigensolver works uh, slightly better, uh, uh, much better than the phase estimation uh, method. But still, uh, if you if you can uh, see, uh, still uh, we have uh, we have some errors in the in the variational uh, quantum eigensolver method. So this means that the experimental er uh, noise in the circuit still affects the ground, uh, estimation of the ground state energy. Then we just consider to apply the error mitigation method uh, uh, to the simulation of the hydrogen molecule. Here, suppose that the noise in the simulation is a depolarizing no uh, noise channel. In general, it works for arbitrary channel. And suppose that the error rate for a single qubit error is the same and for two qubit gate is also the same. Here is the simulation result. Uh, here we assume that uh, single qubit error is uh, 0 0.0005 and two qubit gate is uh, 0 0.005. So maybe you cannot see very clearly because both the two results with and without error mitigation uh, are quite well. So here is a, a detailed uh, a graph of, uh, of this one. So you can see that uh, for the result without error mitigation, we do have uh, some uh, uh, mistakes of the of the uh, of the estimation uh, of the uh, ground state energy estimation. While uh, with error mitigation, we can uh, reduce the error quite a lot. Here, uh, we also simulate the result uh, uh, with a larger error case. Uh, the single qubit error is uh, 0 0.005, and the two qubit error is uh, 0 0.05. So uh, this is the so the oh sorry. So uh, here you can see the result with error mitigation improves a lot compared to the one without error mitigation. While uh, it was to mention that here we use the same sample size for both methods. That is, we just use a one million uh, sample size for uh, both the error mitigation and uh, the conventional method. And we just use uh, two extrapolation points. In, in, in practice, we can also use more extrapolation points to improve the result. So we also uh, consider the case of, uh, about the simulation for the helium-hydrogen uh, molecule. Here is the Hamiltonian, and here is the, re the realization, the circuit, and the, uh, the result from this uh, uh, paper. So you can see the noise in the circuit uh, indeed affects the simulation result. Uh, and uh, while uh, for our application of the error mitigation method, we uh, consider the same uh, dep depolarizing channel, and uh, but now instead we have uh, six parameters to optimize. And here is the simulation result, where you can see uh, here we assume single qubit error is uh, 0 0.001 and two qubit gate is uh, 0 0.01, and you can see that the result uh, with error mitigation is uh, quite accurate. So from uh, these uh, two results, we can see error mitigation indeed works for quite shallow and small sized circuits. But uh, in practice, uh, what quantum chemistry is uh, 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 attractive is uh, because uh, we can indeed achieve very accurate uh, estimation of the ground, uh, of ground state energy. But uh, in practice, to achieve uh, accurate uh, estimation of the ground state energy, we need to consider more complicated basis. So in the previous works, we just consider in the minimum basis, so uh, which is the red curve uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the above. And uh, while in practice, we need to consider more complicated uh, computer, uh, uh, basis for the simulation. And in that case, and you can see uh, the energy curve uh, are still quite different. So even if we can get the most accurate uh, energy estimation for the minimum basis, still we have a huge gap, uh, a huge difference to the uh, actual energy uh, curve. Well, uh, in the quantum uh, chemistry simulation, the required number of uh, qubits uh, is uh, related to the, to the number of bases. And uh, furthermore, if we consider the unitary coupled cluster ansatz, the number of parameters is also uh, increasing uh, to the number of uh, qubits and also the number of bases. Here, I just uh, quickly estimate the number of qubits and number of parameters that we need to uh, in, the, in the optimization. So here, for example, for the minimum basis, without any reduction, uh, we, need at, we need four qubits. 
and we need uh, uh, 272 uh, parameters. While for the most complicated basis here we try, we need 200 uh, qubits, and we need 2 billion parameters to optimize. While I also calculate the number of uh, terms in the, uh, in the Hamiltonian by, by using the open fermion uh, package, so I just calculate the, the four bases because uh, uh, with the larger bases, the number of terms are, um, are, are larger and the computation time is uh, very long. So for the, for the CCPVATZ basis, you can see we need uh, more than uh, 100,000 uh, terms uh, in, the, in the Hamiltonian. So it seems that to get some very, to get the actual uh, ground state energy of the uh, Hamiltonian here, even, even for hydrogen, we need more number of qubits and we need to optimize a lot of uh, parameters. So to summarize, error mitigation works quite well for shallow circuits and chemistry simulation. While uh, on the other hand, to get some very accurate uh, results uh, of chemistry simulation, we indeed need to consider a large basis, while this seems to be still quite challenging. There are a few potential solutions to, uh, to this problem. So the first one is uh, probably we can try other encoding methods, for example, uh, the first quantization method, where the, uh, where the number of qubits doesn't increase with the, with the accuracy, because we just consider the, uh, directly the wave function of the space. And this, uh, this method is uh, recently uh, discussed in this uh, IBM paper. And another method is uh, also introduced in the IBM paper, uh, they consider Hamiltonian reduction. That is, probably there are some redundancy in the Hamiltonian. For example, for the uh, minimum basis of the, uh, of the hydrogen, we can reduce four qubits to just one qubit using some uh, Hamiltonian reduction. But uh, I, tried the res uh, I tried the algorithm, but it seems that the reduction doesn't work very well. It's, so it uh, seems to just uh, reduce at most uh, two qubits for larger bases. So another possible uh, solution is to try hardware efficient ansatz, which is also uh, recently realized in the IBM experiment paper. So instead of uh, using the unitary couple cluster ansatz, we may try some other ansatz that is more experimentally fr friendly. And the final one is uh, probably we can try some other optimization method. So before the end of the talk, I just want to show some results uh, that is done by the by last week. So it may be not it may not uh, correct, but uh, I just want to show you show you, <laughs> and uh, to yeah to to ask for your advice comments and uh, yeah. So here we consider the problem for the helium hydrogen uh, uh, Hamiltonian, and uh, remember that originally we need to solve the ground state energy for this Hamiltonian, uh, but instead here we consider another. Uh, a tunable Hamiltonian. Here we have a parameter t that we can control uh, in experiment. When t equals zero, we have a Hamiltonian, uh, which is very simple, just uh, this uh, uh, Hamiltonian that is uh, just uh, has uh, local terms. So we can analytically solve this Hamiltonian. And then with the t, by increasing t from t equals, t equals zero to t, t equals one, we just recover the original Hamiltonian. So this idea, uh, is uh, similar to uh, adiabatic quantum computing. So here, we just uh, solve the uh, ground state energy for t equals zero, just by analytical uh, solution. And then we gradually change uh, t, and then we can gradually get the correct uh, energy curve for the original Hamiltonian. And I also estimate the energy gap between the ground state and the first excited state for, uh, uh, for, for a certain distance. And you can see that the gap is uh, still a constant, uh, at, at least for this uh, simple uh, example. Uh, so in general, the prob uh, this algorithm uh, should be analyzed in more, uh, more carefully uh, to study uh, its energy gap uh, uh, af after considering uh, scaling of the qubits and uh, so on. So, okay, so this is a uh, group photo, and uh, thank you very much. So, thank you. Um, so, questions? Ah, plenty of questions, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so I'm just wondering, with this, uh, with this active error minimization thing, I, I have this error parameter that I, I, I say I can tune it, I want to tune it to zero, but I can't tune it to zero, so I tune it to some cutoff, and then I extrapolate back to zero. Now, if I work in a, if I'm in, in the lab and I'm doing, well, not me, but somebody else is doing a real experiment, then they don't necessarily know what this error parameter really looks like, and usually they have multiple knobs which they can tune to try to improve their circuit, so you're not entirely sure that you're going to go back to zero with the same, you know, like at the same time with the same knobs. Mm -hmm. how, can I, how can you extract an, a single epsilon parameter that I can, I can take my energies from, from any method I, I have and extrapolate them back to zero and, and have a good guarantee that this, this epsilon parameter is a faithful representation of what I have? Okay. Uh, so, in fact, there are two uh, realizations of the linear extrapolation method. So one is uh, uh, you just uh, uh, proportionally increase the error rate. So in that case, you need to know that, for example, for the two-cubic gate, you have this, uh, you have this uh, uh, error, uh, and then you can just increase error. For example, you just uh, run the uh, two-cubic gate for a longer time to in proportionally increase the uh, error rate. But uh, if this is not possible in practice, then there is another way. So in that way, you need first to perform process tomography to the to the uh, uh, to the uh, to the gate, and then with the process tomography, so we can apply some extra poly uh, gates after at the end of the circuit to effectively increase the error, uh, error rate. Okay. Thanks. Um, okay. So uh, I I actually tend to agree with. Um, your sort of arguments about the scaling of unitary couple cluster and why it's not well suited to near-term devices. But I just want to make a comment about this because I've noticed several talks and actually papers recently which seem to have a common misconception. The proposal has always been to run classical couple cluster in order to understand, say, what transitions are symmetry forbidden uh, and so forth. And uh, so, you, like in, in Several papers I've seen recently, people say things like, oh, a molecular hydrogen, there's several thousand parameters, and at 10 qubits, you know, it would be 10,000 parameters or something. So for context, LIH has 12 qubits. There are seven parameters when you run classical couple cluster. So that's sort of an important part of that. Um, and in fact, it, it always has fewer terms than the number of terms in the Hamiltonian and not the other way around. Um, okay, all right, yeah. I'll pass to Garnet, who probably has a real question now. Yeah, sorry. I also wanted to make, I guess, not a question but a comment, which was on the the use of kind of larger basis func larger basis sets to approach accuracy from that perspective. Like, while that's true in general, I think the if you follow the kind of traditional path of classical quantum chemistry that many of us follow, I think in early quantum devices you're going to want to use qubits a little bit more parsimoniously than that, and that you reserve them for only the parts of the space where there's strong correlation. So that even if you use, say, a CCPV 5Z basis with, you know, 220 basis functions, the strong entanglements may be only happening in, say, four or eight of those orbitals, and the rest can be treated perturbatively to high accuracy, which is kind of the standard approach for things like DMRG and others right now. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably the approach you want to use on a, a quantum computer as well, rather than attempting to treat all of these nearly classical orbitals using your quantum qubits. Uh, I'm sort of adding to this, but making slightly different point. There, there is unfortunately an error in the um, counting of parameters that you're using for the couple cluster theory. So the exact parameterization for H2 only scales quadratically with the number of qubits because you only have two particles. So the number of parameters is equal to the number of particles multiplied by the number of qubits. Uh, so it's actually, because classically that's a similar, you know, the, number of parameters you have is much larger than the Hilbert space size. You know, classically, that's a simulation which runs in a, in, a, in a second or something, and that's because you don't have so many parameters for the exact solution.
uh, sorry, okay. So here, the simulation I just considered for simplicity, the depolarizing channel, but so in practice, we can have an arbitrary quantum channel. And uh, so, yeah, so the error mitigation method works for general uh, quantum channels. Is that uh, the answer to your question? You mean the asymmetry of the? Sorry, maybe we can't discuss in private, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have a comment to make about that last question. I have actually looked at the lithium hydride curve, yeah. and um, it's not actually, um, in that case, it's not actually a mixture of spin states. It actually comes from a, um, uh, at the um, equilibrium distance, it's an ionic state, and at the um, separated distance, it's um, two neutral radicals. And so um, you have a, um, a, a portion in the middle where there are two um, uh, states, singlet states interacting, um, and so you don't have a clean, strongly dominated um, uh, state and because you can't run for enough, um, uh, you don't have enough depth on the current system, you can't um, um, deal with those correlations properly. Okay.